audio commentary for this re-release of the movie. Oh, uh, wait, not yet. Sorry, sir, this is just the DVD menu. The movie hasn't started yet. Well, I see you dug up the original movie poster. Oh boy, that takes me back. Hello, Dan Smith here. I directed this film back in, uh, well, it feels like a century ago. Yeah. The studio asked me to provide a commentary track for the DVD release. And wham, straight into the action. No fluff or anything. That's what we did back then. Crash landed ship. Out pops our hero, the fearless Dick Starspeed. The ship's velocity reactor is damaged. I believe that I am stranded on an alien planet. Played, of course, by actor Jonathan Digby. Went on to some minor roles after this. Ah, uh, such a shame. I thought from day one, this guy's got leading man written all over his face. why Dick breaks these boxes. He actually had lived it. I told Jonathan, always keep things exciting. Greetings, citizens of Gravoria. I am Dick Starspeed, and I come in peace. Probably shouldn't have had Dick draw his weapon when he was talking about peace. Well, maybe one day we'll go back and see Giat into a sandwich or something instead. Ha! Just kidding. And this is what people pay to see. A no-name middle-aged B-list actor duking it out with stuntmen in costumes. Such stunning choreography. And the extras in those robot suits really knew how to take a punch. Oh, literally. I told Jonathan not to hold back. Give it all to him. Kick him in the nuts and bolts. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. We handled it responsibly. We made them all sign waivers not to sue for injuries. If I land squarely on that grain silo, I should survive this fall unscathed. I shouldn't say this now, but you could actually see the strings if you squinted hard enough. A screenwriting trick from back in the old days. You put a grain silo or some haystacks down and it solves all your gravity-related problems. Some of my equipment was lost when my ship was shot down. 
But what luck. This high-tech scanner reports that my ray gun is nearby. Ooh, ooh, the fearless sea monster, always patrolling the shore, eagerly awaiting for his next meal. I designed this creature to reflect the human condition, always hungry, never satisfied, the bottomless pit of the beast's stomach. I don't know, you say stuff like that in interviews and your film always wins awards. Ah, oh, the dinosaurs. You just don't see quality stop motion like this anymore, do you? Someone actually sat there and moved them frame by frame. Today, it'd be done with computers, but where's the artistry in that? here look a little plastic well it's because they are i took them from the set of my last film vampire island 2. we got our fair share of nasty letters from scientists complaining about our portrayal of the dinosaurs was news to me. Apparently, these stegosauruses weren't meat eaters. Must have preferred shellfish or something. Wow, well, how do they know? That's what I say. the local population is defenseless. That's where our hero steps in and saves the day. Look, we put Jonathan through a lot shooting this film. He wasn't the best actor, especially when reacting to getting hit. He's what you call a flincher. So I told the stuntman to really just go to town on him. It's the only way to get an honest performance sometimes. Our props master tried to make the weapons saw, but there's only so much you can do. Lucky for us, Dick's entire body was covered in that spacesuit. That thing was a lifesaver when it came to hiding bruises. to be gold. 
You'll notice the gold disappears when Dick touches it. We had a deleted scene that explained he's actually teleporting it back to his ship. It's funny, no one ever questioned how Dick was able to walk around with an infinite amount of gold on him. Our first attempt was uh, kind of a disaster. We tried using real apes, thought it'd cut down on the costume budget a bit. But have you ever tried working with apes? They are the worst actors ever. They don't sit still for a moment, and the second you take your eyes off of them, they're flinging their feces all over the place. Jonathan refused to work with him after he got a, um, well, it's, let, let's just say that he uh, had to take more than a couple of showers one day. You know, you never forget the smell of monkey poo. We steam cleaned the studio top to bottom. Still never got rid of it entirely. All through the rest of the shot, we kept finding those little surprises hiding inside various props. Boy, <laughs> were those the days. Really top-notch stop-motion effects, huh? Unfortunately, we skimped on the Dick Starspeed puppet a little. The Earthman is not for you to eat, fiend. Oh, this is groundbreaking. We had the woman rescuing the man for once. We were really ahead of our time with this scene, but. Well, then again, I've always been rather progressive. The studio exec didn't seem to get why it was such a big deal, though. I'm sorry, we don't see this as anything unusual. Ha! Of course! It's unusual! A woman would never save the man! It just doesn't happen. Not in the movies, not in real life. I don't know why we didn't get more recognition for this scene. No, I guess I was just a little too ahead of my time. Thank you for saving me, strange woman. What is your name? I am the magnificent Scarlet Nova. <laughs> Do not 
question my motives. Just be happy that you are still alive. I must speak with my father at once. I shall teleport to his chambers. Huh? Where is this place? This is not my father's chambers. <laughs> you have disobeyed me for the final time, Scarlet. Enjoy an eternity in the Tower of Eternal Solitude for all eternity. <laughs> the old fool did not notice I am wearing my jetpack. <laughs> Booster usage. Jump. Wait. Wait. Use booster. Survive deadly fall. Scarlet didn't quite realize she needed to shoot those energy orbs down below. Keep in mind, Stacy was doing this on a sound stage, okay? The energy imps, such a neat effect. We had to paint each movement frame by frame and superimpose it into live footage. We were pulling all nighters for weeks. Well, when I said we, I meant the artist. I'm pretty much useless if I don't get a solid 10 hours a night. But they were at it forever. Eh, they had to redo it all because I accidentally told them red instead of blue the first time. Uh, artists. to the teleport terminals. I shall only be able to utilize the ones I activate manually. Ah, I knew you would return. Puny Earthman, you shall help me overthrow the Emperor. Why would you turn against your own father? How do I know I can trust you? Oh, this because scene. This is practically to... Shakespeare in outer space. Just as the entire planet does. And, uh... Earthman. Huh? Patrick, what's wrong with the video? Ah, uh, sorry, sir. Technical problems. Darn it, we're missing some really good writing here. There. Sorry about that. Well, we just passed right by her big scene. Basically, they agree to work together, but one must stay behind in a sleep chamber at all times. Should I rewind? Ah, uh, never mind. I'll continue from here.
Uh, spoiler alert! Our heroes may or may not find a particular tool that will allow them to destroy those rock barriers later on in the film. Right from the start, our budget was a little tight, even by standards back then. To make do, Tony shot a couple scenes in black and white. Originally, he intended to use it for flashbacks, but then I had to break it to him. Our film doesn't have flashbacks. We almost made it a silent film just to cut costs. an absolute necessity we have a T-Rex in this film, but we got this Serato thing instead. Of course, I went through the whole production thinking it was a T-Rex, because really, who can tell the difference anyway? It would appear that now is the time for us to climb the Deadly Tower of Monsters. 